Hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to the Reds Take. So today is going to be a college football day. So for me, I'm going to go over my top 10 games for each week of the college football season um, throughout over the next week or so. Um, for th for this um, for today specifically, I'm going to go over weeks one through two is what I have planned. So let's get started. So I feel like the top game of week one, there's a couple options you can choose from. Um, but for me, I'm going to go Michigan at Washington for numerous reasons. Number one, both teams are going to be having new quarterbacks. So it'll be interesting to see um, if Michigan has a good enough quarterback like, or Washington has a good enough good quarterback. Because I feel like for both those teams, they're going to have maybe a little bit of a drop-off because both of them, well, specifically Washington had a really good quarterback last year. Um, also, Washington has a new coach, and he's a rookie head coach. So it'll be interesting to see how – um, a new Washington team is going to look and stuff like that. But then also the biggest reason is obviously because of Jim Harbaugh. Because of Jim Harbaugh, if he goes to Washington, I mean, playing out Washington's hard. He has to go for, I think, easier time to, was ever so like, it's not easy. But if he goes to Washington to face a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach and he gets beaten, that's not going to look good. Especially if he ends up losing to Ohio State once again and maybe loses in there again like a Penn State or Michigan State or something like along those lines. Like if all of those stuff happens and you're gonna you people are gonna demand that he get fired. Like it's not gonna look good for him if he loses the first game off the bat to a rookie head coach and, and rookie quarterback. So that'll be very interesting to see um, how that game shakes out. I'm gonna be looking forward to that one. And the next one is Alabama versus USC in Dallas, at least hopefully that game still happens as neutral location site, but um like if you like I, I feel like Alabama's better, don't get me wrong, but there's a chance for Alabama to get upset in a game like this. Like USC has perfect chance. Number one, USC has their quarterback coming back, Keaton Slovis, and in my mind he was a top ten worthy quarterback of all the college football on quarterbacks last year. So I feel like and he was only a, a freshman, so he's gonna continue to improve versus Alabama where they're gonna have either a brand new quarterback, or um, the quarter, or the quarterback uh, Mac Jones. I played a few games last year, but obviously he's just not as good as two, and that's the main difference there. Two is not playing, so. and then also Alabama lost uh, their best wide receiver from last year. Actually, two best wide receivers from last year. They lost a good offensive guard and stuff. They lost a couple good defenders, so like they just lost a bunch of key players. Now, of course, Alabama's got retool. And USC's been having a pretty good recruitment recently, so they're going to have a retool as well because they lost their best wide receiver. But still, it's just like I feel like if this is a game where USC could take advantage of Alabama, this has to be the game. So I feel like at least for the first half, this game would be really close. Oh, yeah, and by the way, um, I forgot to say, I'm not going to give away any scores like I like I would. Um, I'll give the scores away once we get to the actual college football season. Um, so that way I, so that way I don't have to make up scores and then not having to waste time because it didn't happen or something like that. But I'm pretty confident that we can at least start the season on time. Okay, third, the Holy Wars, BYU versus Utah. Um, it'll be interesting this year. Utah lost so many players to the draft because they because it was one of their best teams ever um, last year where they were like a playoff caliber team to the very end. But um, honestly, if, if and, and BYU has not had very good luck against Utah over the past decade because um, Utah's won 10 in a row. But if this is the year for BYU to beat them, like this, this has to be a Utah has so many, many new stars, so much turnover. BYU mostly returned a lot of their starters. Um, plus, like Utah, um, I think they have a new defense corner, and plus they're gonna have a new quarterback and stuff like that. So it's just all gonna be um, very new. And so that like Utah is gonna be good. Don't get me wrong, but they're gonna be kind of slow to start to start off, in my opinion. So this is the game where BYU has to take advantage. And for me, it should be another Holy War Classic when it comes down right to the wire. Uh, four is Georgia versus Virginia. Now, I don't think Virginia is going to be quite good as last year, but I feel like they can be a, a decent team, like win eight games or something, maybe nine, depending on how things go, because the agency is kind of a weak conference. Um, and, and then Georgia, I mean, it's they're going to be, in my opinion, I'm a like I have a very good chance to be a playoff team. They're going to be very good. They got um, Jamie Newman from Wake Forest as a as a grad transfer QB. So so even though they lost Jake Fromm and Newman has to get used to the system, it's not like it's going to be a huge drop off. I mean, for the first game in my because you're getting you're getting used to stuff. But like as the season rolls on, he'll be just fine. But um, I feel like because Newman's new to the Georgia system, that 
that gives Virginia at home the chance to kind of make things close. But again, Virginia's going to be having a new quarterback, and uh, so we just don't know how Virginia's going to look. I'm predicting they'll be just fine under Brock and Hall because they keep on improving. But with a new quarterback, we'll see how things go. By North Carolina versus UCF, so a group of five opponent here. So North Carolina, like I have very high expectations. They've been having a good recruiting class, and a lot of people are basically having high expectations in general because it's a Mac Brown coach team, and they did very well last year for a team that only went one, two games a season before that. And in my opinion, I expect Sam Howe to be a, I made like a top five high, finalist for a Heisman. I feel like he's going to have a very good year. Um, he's definitely top ten quarterback in college football, in my opinion. Um, but North Carolina had the problem last year of overlooking some games. So, for example, it's like they get up, they um, they only lose by one point to Clemson, and then they um, beat teams like um, Miami was a bowl team, stuff like that. But then they go and lose to Appalachian State. Now, Appalachian State was one of the best group of five teams last year. Don't get me wrong, but in North Carolina, you gotta win. You gotta win those type of games. Type. So, here's a game where easily North Carolina can easily overlook UCF, and then UCF wins at home because UCF, all that they're not as good as they have been the past two years, winning um, at least twelve plus games, and then also um, their defense is not as good as it once was. Like UCF at home can still get you if you overlook them. So North Carolina, like I said, has to be very careful about this game. Six Indiana versus Wisconsin, so get a conference game to start right, right off the bat. Um, I feel like Wisconsin should win this one pretty easily, though. But, again, since it's the first game of the season, that means anything can happen. So if Indiana comes more prepared than Wisconsin, then Wisconsin can be in trouble. So let's just see how things go there. Seven, Oregon State versus Oklahoma State. Now, Oklahoma State blew Oregon State out last year, but Oregon State actually ended the season like this year very nice, getting close to being eligible. But like, they ended the season on a pretty high note. So if they can continue that momentum – they can, they can actually win six or seven games. They should become a bowl-eligible team. So, and with all the drama that Oklahoma State has gone through recently with the Mike Gundy situation, it wouldn't surprise me if that's with that chaos combined, like Oregon State just comes in the still water and gets the upset. So, um, Oklahoma State, again, has to be careful there. Eight, you got Purdue versus Nebraska. So, we all thought Purdue was going to be good. Oh, not good, but like, maybe eight win team last year. Cause like they got bulgeable the year before that they gave extension to their head coach, but then Purdue just bombed and only won four games last year. So I'm not sure what to expect from Purdue. And as far as Nebraska goes, this should be the year where they, where I'm not expecting them to win nine or eight games or anything like that. They win a division, but they should finally get bowl eligible this year under Scott Frost. So this would be a very important game for both teams to try to get bowl eligible, especially Nebraska at their home. Cause if Nebraska loses this game to start off, then it's going to be like, Oh great. Here comes another season of, I'm not going to a bowl game type of thing if you can't even beat Purdue at home. So very important psychologically for both teams. Nine, TCU versus California. Now, I don't expect California to be as good as normal. Like, in my opinion, I feel like they'll um, not go to a bowl game. They should like that fast in one, one, four, get maybe five and barely miss out. But And I feel like TCU, after last year, not going to a bowl game final would be hungry, desperate, and they're going to try to get back to bowl game. Now, so I feel like they can jump up from five wins to seven wins or maybe eight wins type of thing. Also, this is a rematch of two years ago when they played in the bowl game. It was like defensive bowl of the year. So it would be pretty interesting to see this game fall down. Um, expect a low-scoring game here. And then 10, Florida State versus West Virginia. So both teams are trying to improve off of last year. Um Norvell, uh, who came from Memphis his first year at FSU. So because of a new coach and new scheme and stuff like that, and West Virginia had their new coach and rookie issues last year, and now it's in West Virginia. Florida State's go to there. That's a chance for West Virginia to try to get upset here because I do feel like Florida State's a better team. But, again, first week of the season on the road, like anything can happen. So I don't um, discredit West Virginia's chance of coming out on top. And I'm actually – I'm just going to do um, – one, uh, I'm just going to do week one only for today. So that we just, I'll say week two and three and if possibly four for Monday, but at least week two and three for Monday. And then hopefully we get some more like breaking news next week on whether um, we find out more if any players are going to be sitting down or not. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens there. I'm um, also real quick. Um, I want to remind you that um, since my, my YouTube account is used for everything, like I every once in a while I may post something for school or something like that. So if you see that, just ignore it. Um, and I'll, I'll, and then, yeah, so just give, so just ignore it because it's going to be used for school. And then, 
and just listen to my podcast only. So thank you very much for tuning into my day show. Um, let me know what you all think and leave comments what you're talking about in the future. Um, please subscribe to my channel and tell everyone about me. Thank you very much, and you all have a wonderful day.